Hey, Todd here, Forge Firing Company. Got a special guest, good friend of mine, helping us with some videos. Hi, I'm Sean Duffy. I'm from Build Your Culture, and uh, we're just going to go over a few things that are going to make you more efficient and practical in the fire ground. We're going to be discussing uh, searching bunk beds and the sequence that uh, we want to use when we come into a room and we actually find a bunk bed. Um, what we know about victims and fires today is that the higher in that space they are, the less likely they are to survive that environment. So we definitely want to put emphasis on the top bunk uh, as priority. So what we do when we come in and, and we're searching a room is we'll identify that this is a bunk bed by feeling the post. Rather than searching the bottom and underneath the bed first, I want to follow this post straight up to the top. I want to go ahead and give a, a reach up just to make sure that I don't have an additional bed up there. Um, and then once I'm clear from that, I'm going to go ahead and start searching this, uh, the top one. Now, I have a, a light that I have as a right angle light. So that'll always be on. And it's attached to a cord. So that way that can help aid me in my search. So one of the first things I want to do, scan real quick to see if I have anything. And I'm going to let my light go. Next thing, if there's something up here and I can reach in, I'll reach in as far as I can go, feel that, and I'll start pulling down on the sheets. When I pull down on the sheet, I should feel if there's weight. I always want to visually and physically inspect that search. So when you step up, I want to search that area. As I continue to pull these sheets to me and get more and more of that, I'll be able to feel if there's a victim. I can also do that by coming to this way and reaching in and feeling all the way up to the top. Once we've cleared that, we'll work our way down. So we come down, same thing. I'm going to go ahead and reach in, and I'll feel with my hands real quick, and then I'm going to pull the sheets to me. The reason for pulling sheets and bedding is when there's a victim on there, once we get them to the floor, I now have something that I can use to aid in my removal. Once we clear the bottom, we can again take our light, take a nice quick look underneath, I might not be able to physically get under there with my hands, so I want to stick my leg in there as far as I can get. Start working my way through. Once I clear that bunk, we're good, and we just continue the rest of the search of the bedroom. In the last video, we demonstrated uh, how to systematically search the bunk bed uh, and in what order to be the most efficient. Right now, what we're going to demonstrate is finding a victim on the top bunk and how we get into that actual getting from the top bunk to the floor and the removal process. So as we stated in the first video, we found a post. We follow that up, I reached up here, I know that's my ceiling. What I'm gonna do immediately is get into this space and I'm gonna start pulling this sheet. I've already felt that I have some weight there. So before I finish the removal, what I wanna do is clear the space around them, make sure there's no other kids or anything like that. So I'm just going to kind of step up in here, sweep around my victim here, sweep all the way around. All right, now that I've cleared and I've known that this is the first victim that I have, I want to start that removal. I'm going to go ahead and pull and position the body. So I grab the legs first because they're the smallest area and it's going to allow me to maneuver. As I'm doing that, I'm pulling the sheet. I'm going to step down. I'm going to let the, the weight of the victim work with me. Now, because this is a child, I'm easy, it's easy for me to reach underneath and grab the head. So I'm going to grab the legs like this, almost like if I'm carrying them. I'm going to reach behind the, the head. And I'm just going to bring the victim to me. Once I cradle them, if you notice the sheet's still involved, We'll go ahead and get their airway down to the ground. Again, we're dealing with a child, so the weight is not a whole lot. So at this point, I can either use the sheet and drag out, or I can get low in the space where the victim just kind of grab and start moving this way. 
So as you see, the victim is still on the sheet. So I can either opt to wrap them up and grab this and pull like this, or I can manipulate the body weight of my victim by grabbing them across the chest and bringing them into me. This allows me to have more control, left or right, of the victim as I'm moving around corners. So what I would do is I would just plant my hand and I would go in the direction of exit, which is towards the door, and we would just drag like this. What that allows me to do, again, is keep the victim's airway lower in the space, not so high up in the element. And then I have an option here if I need to remove or pass my victim on to somebody uh, so they can remove and I can come in and finish the rest of my primary search. In the last video, we demonstrated the removal of a victim when we found them on the top bunk. One of the things that I want to address is that we should always, even after finding and removing a victim, go back to the room that we are in and finish that primary search. Um, where we have one victim, especially with bunk beds, there, there's most likely two. So after I handed my victim off to another searcher and they're starting that removal process, I'm gonna enter back into this room and I'm gonna go back to the bottom bunk where I didn't search yet. So again, I drop down and I would just do everything that I need to do the same way, grabbing the sheets, pulling, searching that space, followed by coming back under like we demonstrated and clearing underneath the bed. What I want to do now is work my way this way and start searching and clearing the, the rest of that room that I may have missed. Uh, there's also a closet in this bedroom, so we want to make sure that we don't miss that closet. And before we leave the room entirely, that we've checked every single spot where potential victims would be found.